Victoria 3 is finally here. And as a new grand strategy title from Paradox, there is a lot to take in. If you're still wondering whether to get the game or still wondering how to even begin playing, I've got the perfect videos for you right here on the channel. In this video, however, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You see this map? There are actually hundreds of hidden factions underneath these beautiful colors. You can only play them if you know of a little trick built into the game itself. Oh yes, this is all completely legal, achievement-friendly, and insanely awesome. First of all, just a little tip for you before we begin. Even by default, Victoria 3 kind of hides a few factions already. That's because here, factions that are subjects to others are automatically shaded in their color. This means that even though they share color, it's possible to play Norway and not just Sweden, Finland and not just Russia, the East India Company and not just Great Britain, and so on. This is pretty cool on its own, but let's get down to the real meat and potatoes, shall we? Our empires are massive in Victoria 3, and despite most of them being absolute discriminatory nationalists at the beginning, each nation-state actually contains a whole number of nations within them, with each one as possible candidates for your next playthrough. And let me show you not only how this is done, but let's get on to our first hidden nation. Situated smack down in the middle of the power struggle between Prussia and Austria, we have the once mighty state of Bohemia. Of course, it's not visible on the map just yet, but I assure you it's there. That's why we have to enter the diplomacy menu, go to release subject, and looky here, an entire mass of independence-minded nations. The one we want, however, is Bohemia. And now we get some seriously interesting options. We may either release Bohemia as a fully independent nation, we can release it as its own state, but remaining under our sphere of influence as a subject, or, and here comes the most fun one, we can actually play as Bohemia. We can even choose to play Bohemia as a subject, or as a fully independent state. And for now, we're going our own way. Now look at this, a whole new country just entered the world stage with an awesome flag to boot. Now I'm not saying this will be an easy play. As a new nation, finding new production and trade opportunities will be vital, but the simple fact that this is possible is just so much fun, and I love the flavor effects of now having a new country being led by its corresponding nation and people. And look here, we can even form another state from Bohemia if you so wish, namely Czechoslovakia, or even the Danubian Empire, later on. But I like Bohemia's flag more so I won't make that change. Our next nation on the list are actually two different factions. If you thought Iberia was a bit too peaceful with only two countries present, and that red rock of course, well then I have some good news for you. Not only can we play as Catalonia as a reborn Aragon, fighting the Spanish for the chance to form a true Iberian empire led by the Catalans, but we can also release Andalusia. Now granted, Andalusia will be a Catholic nation since everyone else were Reconquistad almost four centuries ago. But still, it's a nice touch. Next up, it's back to Austria once more. And more specifically, to Austrian Italy. You see, it's actually possible to play as Venice itself. Now this is a faction of my own tastes, not only because of that extremely gorgeous flag, but because of its awesome position and possibilities for once again to completely troll the Greeks and the Ottomans. It's a small power at just one region, but with a large GDP of almost 2 million pounds, and a total of 17 possible battalions is actually quite a formidable force. Just make sure to build that navy up before you try anything too reckless. Then we have a truly special one indeed, and that is none other than Kurdistan. Kurdistan is a nation originally under the Ottoman Empire. However, unlike the other nations in this video, the Kurds are not allowed independence just yet. However, once we research the nationalism idea, which really brings that spirit of the people out in the streets, is when we can finally do it. Now in this example, I've crafted a fairly mighty Ottoman Empire. But normally, the Kurds would have to balance both the Ottomans, Egypt, Persia, and various Arab factions to the south, and even sharing a border with Russia. Diplomacy will be your best bet at first then, although so will managing to reform your government and laws as any laws you have in the Ottoman Empire, which are fairly decadent, will transfer to the new Kurdish government. If you want an even bigger edge after the transfer of power, consider developing the Kurdish regions as the Ottomans before independence. Then we have another unique one, and arguably the most powerful of all the factions on this list, namely Ukraine. 
Once released, Ukraine actually becomes the world's 8th greatest power, and a major power right off the bat. It's forced a total of 9 states, a total of over 80 regular battalions, and of course, the massive breadbasket that is Ukraine. The awesome thing here is that the provinces of Kiev, Kherson, and Luhansk all sport the insanely good black soil of Ukraine modifier, meaning you produce 15% more food per farm than usual. Ukraine of course begins with what could become antagonistic neighbors, with Austria, the Ottomans, and the obvious Russia all on its doorstep. So keep this in mind when playing as the free Ukrainians. And now for one of my absolute favorites. We can turn the entirety of American history on its head and play as New Africa, an alternative country in the south of the US. Now we'll get an African-American president as early as 1836. But not only that, since our country still retains the laws of the US, this poses some quite unique challenges. Now, only African heritage cultures are accepted, meaning that Dixie culture is not. However, nothing changed in terms of laws. This means that even though we almost have the same number of African Americans and Dixie here, with both over 1 million, the system of slavery still remains, giving the Dixie population a massive political boost. With new parties in government, however, and with none of them being pro-slavery, it's up to you to chart these new waters and truly free the slaves from a possible confederate revolution. Then we have two interesting cases of several smaller states in the same territories. Great Britain is of course an imperial power, and this means housing a few nations even in the home islands. Here we can release and play as Ireland, Scotland, and even Wales, making the British Isles a battle royale once more. In the Baltics, it's possible to release and play Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and even from there, to unify the cultures, either as the United Baltic Provinces, or even restore the Polish-Lithuanian Empire as Lithuania. And those were the best and most interesting hidden nations in Victoria 3. I absolutely love that there's so much hidden content in this game, even on top of everything else in here. There are of course so many other nations out there as well, from the massive Perm supremacy, a resurgent Mongolia, and of course, one province Iceland, where about 50% of your country is impassable cloud textures which really should be possible to toggle off. If you found any other particularly interesting nations, or if you love my selection, let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. It would also mean the world if you would consider supporting me further as a YouTube member or as a patron, as that really helps me and the channel out. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.